Steve Jobs, Henry Ford, and Dieter Rams. What is their biggest contribution to design today? Is it the, the iPhone or the Model T? Uh, no, it's actually pithy design quotes that designers can use in meetings or in LinkedIn blog posts or to, to start design talks. Uh, I'm Joel. I lead the design team at Anthropic. Uh, and kidding aside, I'm genuinely going to talk about this quote for a minute. Uh, I've seen this quote a lot over the years. I'm sure we all have. Uh, I've always centered myself in this. I'm it's me, the genius creator, who has to like, go beyond what my, my simple users are asking for. Uh, but recently, I've, I've started to really think about the, the people that he's talking about. And I've tried to remind myself that in, in 1900, people really liked horses. More than that, they, they understood horses. Their whole transportation world was organized around horses. And this makes sense because there was a lot of freaking horses. There was one horse for every four people. Everything that people understood about transportation in their lives was, was centered around the horse. It was the defining mental model of their era. So of course, if you were going to talk to people about this new type of transportation, you had to do it in the language of horses. And I think the early makers of cars really understood this. They described cars in terms of horses, what a car is capable of, the limitations and the trade-offs of cars. And painting this picture of where the world is going and taking a familiar world and swapping out these key parts. And this wasn't just marketing. This is a real patent from 1899. It's affectionately called the horsey horseless. It goes on top of a car, and it makes a car look like a horse so it doesn't scare the other horses on the road. I cannot think of a more perfect image to show that even if you believe in where the future is going, you still need to exist in the world as it is and help people through the transition. Put another way, metaphors matter. They help people understand a complex transition, a new technology, in the terms that they understand. They bridge between where technology is going and where the world is today. I've often, when I've seen the Henry Ford quote, thought just about the where technology is going part, but seeing those images and seeing like, just how horsey the dialogue was in the early era of cars makes me remember the lived experience of people, and these are the people who ultimately decide whether to use your tools. And of course, this has uh, stayed the same through our more digital transformations. The Xerox Star in 1981 introduced the personal desktop. How do you explain to people that there's this this digital machine that has documents that you can be organized in discrete spaces, you stick to something that they're familiar with. This is what computers could do in 1993. This is what people understood. How do you explain that there's this new technology that will move information all around the world instantly between computers? A highway is something that everyone knows and understands. Uh, not all metaphors are created equal. This doesn't stop when technology becomes even more familiar and comfortable. The use of skeuomorphism is really leaning on metaphor to explain new capabilities. What do people know and understand? They know they need notebooks. They know they need magazines. They know they need microphones. It helps people bridge the transition. And once we settle on a metaphor, they tend to stick around for a really long time. Email still uses an envelope, even though it's an entirely digital messaging protocol. And the newest, sleekest EVs still advertise their horsepower. So metaphors matter. I think ultimately they matter most to the people who are deciding whether or not to adopt our technology. And they're especially important in times of, of rapid technological change, which I think we're inarguably in with this world of AI. I think this is a good time to ask, like, just what is AI? What should it be? What can it be? How does it actually fit into our lives? What's the metaphor that makes sense? Our users certainly don't know. Uh, I would humbly suggest, as a person who works inside a frontier model company, we don't know either. We're figuring it out as we go. We're adapting as the models change. As designers and as makers, it's, it's our job to have an opinion about this and to shape both what the world thinks and what our peers and what our industry thinks. I think metaphors are a really, really good way of doing that. So for this talk, I'd like to look at what metaphors have been used in AI so far and then propose a potential one that I'm really excited about. Long before generative AI, we had the OG assistant, Clippy. He was small, yes, thank you, clap it up. Uh, he was small, he was helpful, he was unobtrusive, and he literally assisted you with these small tasks you had. Soon our digital devices were with us, they could listen, they could talk, and still we called them assistants. 
And this language continued into the first LLMs, both the positioning, but also literally some of the language. You can see in OpenAI's developer documentation and our system prompt, this word assistant appears. So what does this metaphor communicate to people? When you hear assistant, what associations do you have? I think of assistants as being helpful and useful. They're available and compliant. They, they fade into the background when they're not needed, but they are ready at a moment's notice. They know everything, they get you unstuck, but ultimately you remain in control. And I think this is really accurate and, and frankly reassuring for the capabilities that these current products have. After assistance, we had co-pilots. A co-pilot literally sits next to you and your work. In these Microsoft Office examples, the, the co-pilot is literally there in the sidebar. Same for GitHub Copilot, they ride along with you. It's more of a personified metaphor here, this cute little anthropomorphized pilot, again, right next to you. So what do you think of with this metaphor? What do you think of when you hear the word copilot? I mean, not to be too literal, but I, I think of airline pilots. I imagine myself as a pilot with the AI flying next to me. So what defines this kind of relationship? It's like an assistant on steroids, they have expertise and training and context. I probably rely on a co-pilot when the, when the stakes are high. There's a really high degree of trust. It feels like a really natural evolution from assistants. It's like an assistant who did uh, 5,000 hours of flight training. I can really rely on them. Uh, and then we come to the present. You all know what's coming. It is the year of agents, from CEOs to Super Bowl ads with Woody Harrelson, uh, to the billboard you probably saw on the highway on the way here. Uh, agents are here. What does this metaphor convey? What does this word kind of uh, make people think? I think of a real estate agent. I think of a travel agent. This is TV's property brothers. An agent has domain expertise that I need. They, they do work that I either can't do or I don't want to do. They save me time. They're independent. They do things without me needing to be involved and let me do more as an individual. And though I'm going to talk about other metaphors, I just want to be really clear. We're all in on agents at Anthropic. This is a fascinating, exciting time. I don't say any of this derogatorily. This coming age of agents is going to be capable of amazing things with fascinating UX challenges. But as I look at these current metaphors, all of them have the AI as, as separate and distinct from us, something you, you delegate to. And I just think that's one of many ways to interact with AI. So it's made me wonder, what might AI do with us and not just for us. I'd like to propose an answer that I'm really excited about. I think AI can and should be a creative partner. What does this mean? How is this different from the other previous metaphors we saw? And what does it suggest for the product opportunities that we're all going to be tackling? Uh, that's what I'll focus on for the rest of this talk, but I want to make a brief aside on humility. There's a rich genre of quotes of people who make really bold claims at the beginning of exponential curves that look totally foolish in hindsight. Uh, aside from this guy's awesome mustache, I would rather not look like this guy. Uh, but this world moves really fast. Uh, I wrote this talk in March. It's already May. For all I know, the next metaphor is here, and all of this is going to be self-evidently wrong. Uh, nothing I can do about that. But I am really excited for this creative partner idea. I think it's, it's exciting, it's, it's powerful, and I think it, it might be where the, the models are taking us as they evolve. So with that out of the way, let's talk about what actually defines a creative partnership. A partner should know you really well. They should know your world. They should know who you are, how you work, and your values. They should create with you, not just on your behalf, not just the boring stuff, but they're really central to the, the core creative act. And they grow and evolve and change with you. Partnership is a journey. So let's look at each one and see what it would look like for AI to show up in this way. We'll start with knowing you. A creative partner knows you really deeply. The Steves of Apple were both independently geniuses, of course, but more than that, they, they knew the details of each other's genius. How they just spent hours of time talking to one another, talking, brainstorming, dreaming, asking questions. How can we get an AI to this level of intimate understanding? A partner should ask you questions to get to know you. Uh, I think dating apps are a really interesting precedent here. I'm revealing my age a little bit, but back in my day, we didn't just swipe on pictures. We actually like, talked about ourselves, revealed something about ourselves. Answering the right question can bring uh, the foundation of a really powerful relationship. 
Uh, alas, the kids like to swipe, and that's not a bad thing either. This is from Midjourney. Um, you can build this like personal style. And the way they do that is they show you pairs of images. You choose this or that. And after 20 images, you have this really nuanced personal relationship that is the foundation for the rest of your partnership together. A partner should learn your mood and adapt. This is an unreleased prototype from one of our designers at Anthropic named Samin. This is called asking, who are you today? What do you need from me? What, how can I adapt to deliver just what you need? This is a partner giving you the support that you need or to be pushed, if that's what, what it called for. A partner should be a good listener, should draw you out. I think journaling is an awesome mechanic here. This is a product called Dot. It's like a journal and a coach. I share a ton with Dot, uh, more than almost any other digital tool, and more than just the facts about my life, I share my, my feelings and my emotions and my values. It, it builds this amazing foundation of, of knowing me and is a really, really good partner because of it. A partner should reflect what it learns and improve my self-knowledge through the relationship. Uh, yet another dating app, this is from a Hinge investor presentation. You can see this sort of uh, light AI conversation, and then it creates this kind of fun label that helps tee up kind of the future partnership. On this topic of reflection, we have this feature on Claude called Styles. You can upload a writing sample and teach Claude to write like you. Um, we didn't launch this part, but one of our desires, na designers named Kyle Terman uh, explored having this, this visual reflection of what Claude understands your, your writing style to be, empowering, conversational kind. Claude doesn't just know you, it actually shows that it knows you. It, it demonstrates this intimacy and this familiarity. There's also a fun opportunity to be really visual here. This doesn't have to happen just through text. And finally, a partner should learn what's important to you about your broader world. It's not just me, but it's the world I live in. So in Claude, we have projects. You can upload documents so that Claude really understands everything about you, your goals, your thinking, your progress. OK, so your partner knows you. What do they actually do with that knowledge? You make stuff together. A creative partner is a true partner working closely on the core creative act. John Lennon and Paul McCartney are the canonical example here, and they, they write these songs by basically sitting together, riffing through lyrics, riffing through melodies, and it's all sort of play back and forth, and then all of a sudden this beautiful, timeless song emerges. So how can we get that with AI? A partner should riff back and forth on a shared artifact. Uh, this is a slide from Mid Journey. You can sort of start with an image, choose a part, reprompt in that image, back and forth and back and forth, trying and exploring in this shared canvas. Uh, I think Figma just uh, announced something very, very similar to this. A partner should allow rapid creative experimentation. Figma Slides has this tone slider. You can like, move it around and instantly see a change. These options are limited for now, but it's this act of like, real-time creative riffing. A partner should understand just how hard it is to write. This is a product called PseudoWrite, and it draws out writers by showing that it really understands the, how difficult it is to do long-form writing. It's not just the start a draft mechanic. It's world building, it's outline, it's chapters. This is a partner that like, really gets it, really understands the core act of creativity. A partner should effortlessly and generously seed control back and forth. This is a lovely experiment from the Google Creative Lab. We're sort of co-sketching here. I draw, I hand the marker to Gemini, it draws a little bit. Um, this is something that we made together that we couldn't have made on our own. A partner should surprise you and should push you beyond what you're capable of on your own. I think this is part of why people are so excited about vibe coding, because it's, it's not just that the AI executes exactly on your instructions. It goes a little beyond what it's asked. There's an element of surprise, of, of serendipity. So what's the next frontier here? All these examples are turn-based and static, but true co-creation is, is synchronous. It's organic. It's free-flowing. Uh, put another way, could the Beatles have written Sgt. Pepper if they were texting lyrics back and forth to one another and then waiting minutes to respond? I, I just don't think so. Synchronous co-creation and being in flow together is key. A partner should have a real-time conversation with you. Otter just announced that their meeting agent can actually speak in meetings, not just listen, but actually participate like other collaborators. Miro has this idea of, of uh, sidekicks, these entities that exist in your boards that do the same thing that human collaborators do. They add, they comment, they review. These are the same mechanics we're used to with human-human collaboration, but it's now with AI. A partner should feel unconstrained by format. When we launched Artifacts a year ago, we thought that people would use them mostly for text documents, like a Google Doc. And what we learned is that people really liked making these interactive things, these mini apps, these explainers, art games, like weird experiments that don't have a name. 
When you open up this full canvas, a partner is able to, to do more than you possibly imagined. They can also do things outside the room that you're sitting in together. We released the open source model context protocol that lets uh, AI systems connect to other tools. So you're seeing someone chat with Claude and actually update Blender. Again, this is a creative partner that's not just constrained by the, the tools that you give it, but has the ability to make things out in the world. OK, you and your partner have made these things together. You've pushed each other. Is that it? No, now you grow, now you evolve, now you give feedback and push and change over time. Pixar is an amazing example of this. They have this core creative team that's invested explicitly in their relationship. They give feedback, they seek out problems, and they improve themselves as creative makers. So how might this happen? Partner needs to show its work. You need to see what's been done before you can give feedback. This is Visual Electric. You can see this trail of shared co-creation, what we've done, what we've made together, and this is really the foundation for giving feedback. The team at Ink and Switch is thinking about diffs and sort of how diffs can be a foundational primitive. Here you can see a change in a text doc uh, and an explanation as to why. This looks fairly familiar, but if you expand it and think about a future where an AI might be working for, for days or weeks on a change to an architectural diagram, you certainly need a really compl complex diff concept so that the AI can explain itself and get feedback. Eventually, we'll have fleets of AIs all working on these complex projects. Diff allows you to group and to see these sets of changes and to give really nuanced feedback. A partner has to cite its sources. This is an internal prototype from Anthropic called X-Ray Mode from one of our designers named Alex. It takes this idea of citations, and it applies it to any piece of data. You can just ask Claude, like, where did you get this number? Why do you think this? A true partner has transparency and can reflect on its own decision-making process. A partner should solicit feedback. It's, it's not quite the Beatles this time, but I actually think like, performance reviews are a really good mechanic for this. This is from Lattice. Uh, you can imagine an AI that's actually asking explicitly, like, how did I do? What can I do better? Where, where would you like to see me grow and change? I think coding tools are actually ahead of the curve here. This is from Cursor. There's this set of rules so the AI knows how to handle sort of complex, specific situations. Might there be a more end-user friendly way of doing this? And overall, a partner just has to be clear about how it thinks and how it makes decisions, but this is actually really hard in the world of AI. We really don't understand enough about these models to do this today. Uh, at Anthropic, we invest in this science called interpretability to really understand like, just how is the model making decisions. And once we make progress on that, you can imagine, I think about Brett Victor's work on different layers of abstraction, you can think about these different ways of viewing what's happening with the model. You have the response, you have all of the neurons firing underneath, and then all these layers in the middle that lets you give really nuanced, thoughtful feedback to shape the relationship over time. OK, that was a rapid fire tour through all the ways the AI can be a creative partner, knowing you, creating things with you, and, and growing together over time. So what's the takeaway? Like, what should you actually do with all of this? I think metaphor is a really powerful tool for helping ourselves and our users and our fellow builders to shape where this technology is going. Assistants, co-pilots, agents, I'm excited for a potential of AI to be a creative partner. But honestly, th that's just my opinion. M my real message is this. Pick any metaphor. Pick one that you believe in. Choose one that conveys your vision, your belief, your understanding of the world. It might look really different than ours. I kind of hope it does. I encourage you to pick one and think really deeply about its implications on users and on their expectations. We are absolutely in a transitional era, the coming of the, old, of the new and the passing of the old. Now is the time to bridge these worlds and help people see and understand and benefit from this awesome, magical technology. Thank you.